Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of All Ball Chicago. I'm your co-host, Robert Bobby Reed, and I got the legend, the MVP veteran, your host, Marcus Liberty on the line. What's up, Marcus? What's up, my beautiful people? Man, I'm excited, man. It's a good day, but I'm also not so excited, man, because I got some bad news about one of my best friends, one of my good friends, my hooper buddy, man, uh, Steve Hudson, man. Uh, rest in peace, man. Uh, now it's hitting close to home because of uh, this coronavirus uh, spread, and it it touched it touched something, man. It so touched someone who's real close to us, man. And Steve Steve Hudson will be definitely missed, man. He he was part of uh, Macfire, uh, but he was definitely part of Chicago grassroots in general. So he he made an impact on a lot of kids, man. And um, he definitely will be missed, man. So give my uh, Prayers to his wife and his family. Uh, my condolences, man. And um, he's definitely going to be missed. This one this one hurts, man, for real. Yeah, man. You know, I can honestly say this is the first person that I know that actually passed from the coronavirus. You know, we went to Mendel together back in the 80s. I was only there for a year, but he was a freshman with me. So that's where I remember him from. And I, I never forget, you know, I'll tell you a quick story. You know, I always post and I'm on Simeon, Simeon, Simeon. So I posted something about Mendel, and he went in on me like, about time, Bob, man. Why you ain't never said nothing about Mendel, dude? You was at Mendel first, man. That's your first love. I was like, oh, okay, Steve, you remember that. See, I didn't really realize people remember that. I was like the president of the year coming in there. Uh, uh, that's a whole nother story, but yeah, Steve yeah, he remember told though. He no, remembered he told though. Me. He told you. He told me. Yeah, oh, okay. he told me, he said, man, you know, Bob. He said, you know, Bob went to Mendel. He always talking that Simeon stuff, but so I I, I leave it alone. I don't want to get I went to Mendel that. one year. But but but, <laughs> but man, dude, man, like man, I, when I first met Steve, man, and 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 we hung out and he came down to the low end, man. And he was from the hundreds. Um, and he came down to the low end. Um and 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 actually, man, uh hung out with me. And then he was like, Man, I need some shoes. And you know, back then I was have I had a whole bunch of shoes, and it was some shoes that I just didn't need anymore. So I gave him a whole garbage bag full of all my shoes, man. And I gave it to him, and he took them back home on the L train, man. And and man, he he to this day, man, we talk about that all the time, man. And I know he's not here no more, but me and him used to talk about that all the time. He's like, man, you don't know what that meant to me getting some shoes, man, that I knew my mom and dad couldn't afford, and getting them from you. Man, right, special right. man. So he's like, man, I'm all, I'm gonna be indebted to you forever for life. You know, this is what he's telling me. And I'm like, wow. what? So you just, just that, never just know. that small gesture. That small yes. gesture right there to you went a long way, man. Man, that's what I'm saying. You know, so that that that's why I said it really hurts me, man, because me and him became friends. You know, from that day on, and and then when my nephew, you know, started, you know, doing what he wanted to do as far as play basketball. I knew he needed that that guidance, man. Who someone who'd been there, done that type thing, and I knew I couldn't do it. So Javon, I used to tell him, make sure you you know hang out with Steve, and he'll call Steve, hang out with Steve House, stay at Steve House, and and Steve just you know took him in, man, and, and, and was giving him that 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 love, you know, and guidance and, and things, man, that made Javon, you know, help Javon become who he is. I know Javon is hurt, man, so. Uh, just as much as I am. So, man, we're going to miss Steve, man, for real. Well, Big Steve, man, we love you, man, and that's real, man. And we're not just throwing that out there. You know how people be like, well, we're praying for your family and all that. No, no, we really are, man. And, you know, may you rest in peace and your family, man. If anything y'all need, hit up us, man. Hit Lib up. You know, we can put some money together if y'all need anything, man. We're here to support. You know, we love Steve, man. And, you know, that's it's hard. It's a tough one, man. And so we're going to switch gears on this one real quick. Um, we was talking off the off the off the record about these pro athletes, man. How they managing their money and you know some of the important things that they need to do. And Marcus, you went through it. And can you talk about that? The first thing they teach y'all as rookies going into the NBA about keeping your crowd small and saving your money. How does that work? Well, they they do have a, uh, a rookie seminar for the rookies guys coming into the league. Um, when I was there, it was you know, basically talking about who you're hanging around with, um, making sure, you know, your circle is tight and not, not large, you know, a large circle um, and understanding, you know, 
people going to come from all over, all out of the Whitworth to try to hit you up on money and, and borrowing things from you and, and, and business, you know, I think uh, business is, is, is hard for, cause if you never had a business class or, you know, took business as a, a part of your uh, education, it's hard for you to understand. So when somebody comes to you with a business idea, you just jump on it instead of doing your research and understanding how could you actually make money or are you definitely a part of it or are you just an investor and really don't know what's going on so you just write the check we see that a lot we hear that we hear a lot of you know things like that of guys just cut the check and then they out the way you know and then 10 years later they broke because the guy who you wrote the check to was making money and and, and and putting that money elsewhere and not letting you know what's going on so it it's hard man for people to understand and uh, it's hard for us to say no for one. It's hard for athletes to say no. And it's and that's that's to me is one of the biggest things is really saying no to people and letting them know that it's not nothing against you. It's just I gotta stay protected, you know, because this is my access and I'm trying to, you know, be able to take care of my kids, kids down the road. And and sometimes we just stubborn and man, we we don't get that. We think we're gonna play in the NBA forever and we think we're gonna be good forever and money runs out you have to make a living you know it's, it's crazy that you would say that because i was listening to the antoine walker story and eddie curry story and they resemble the exact same you know how they business partners are that who they thought was business partners or so to speak they was helping them manage their money was stealing from them to some degree and i know tweezy i know i met him and and eddie curry i met him before those are great guys marcus like they got great personality. These are great guys. So I can I, I can see very easy how a snake can swindle in there and try to manipulate that, man. You know, how do you how do you decipher that when somebody present themselves as your friend? Like that's tough. That's gotta be tough. It is, man. It's real tough because you you thinking that they have your best interest at hand. So when they come to you with a plan, they all excited. So they get you excited and you 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 get you get your checkbook, you know, like well, what you want me to do? And then they say, uh, write this out. Cause we got five buildings, vacant buildings that we can, we can make some money, man, and put some tenants in there, man. And we're going to be getting paid, you know, on and on. And then instead of you doing your homework or, or, or having somebody look over whatever they sent to you, an attorney or something, so you can understand what's really going on. I think a lot of times, us athletes, we, we just, we just go with the flow instead of doing our homework and understanding what a business contract looks like or, or understanding uh, an investment, how investment looks like, what it looks like instead of you just saying, I'm going to cut the check and I'm out the picture. You got to understand that you write the check to make money. So you got to understand how much money, what's the percentages and all that about what I'm going to get back in return. So a lot of times we don't, we don't do, we don't do our homework and research. So the guy that you cut the check to be like, Oh, we good. That's what they say. We good. You know, you're going to be good, man. Don't worry about it. end of the year. You're going to have a nice little check. No, man, I can't get down like that. You know, I can't, I can't do business like that. You know, so we got to, we got to, we got to understand who is our friend, who's really our friend. And if it's not really your friend then check them off your list. Hey, but it's, it's hard. It's hard, man. Being a 19, 20 year old kid coming into 20, $30 million you don't have no financial knowledge or foundation. I mean, the most money you had was a student loan check <laughs> or a refund so it, check. So it's, it's interesting that you say that, Bob, man. And I just started thinking, man, about what you just said, that I think colleges, even high school, let's, take, let's even take it back to high school. High school, college should implement, put something like this in the curriculum of understanding how to be a business person because that's what life is to me. Once you get through playing or once you start playing basketball and you got this money and you're going to make money and play, whether it's professionally overseas or in the NBA or wherever it may be, if you don't under, understand how to invest, manage your money, you're going to be broke. Nine times out of 10, you're probably going to be broke, right? So right, I right. think colleges should implement that and put that in the curriculum to understand. So these life skills, we get all this other stuff in our, you know, curriculums and, and math and, 
and reading and, and all this great stuff. But the most important thing to me is when you do make money, you need to understand how to make the right deals. And I think if you get them early, because you just said, you know, these 19, 20 year old kids who are coming into a whole lot of money, they're not staying in college, you know, four years. They leave in after one year. Some of them, like back in the day, they were coming straight out of high school to the pros. So that's why I said it start probably early in high school of understanding what money, money deals and all that is all about. You know, I, I was looking at, I was actually doing some research and remember we was doing a show way back about 10 years ago. Remember we were doing the winter lights go down and all that. Cause we want to talk about that. And it seems to be a racket with, with, well, when these kids go pro, they had these financial teams in place for these kids to go through. But then after they retire, these same people that they put in their corner didn't probably help them sustain, you know, their money. So it almost seems like you go pro and play all these years and all these people, your handlers, get all that money right back up out you. And then when you're done playing, you have nothing. Like, what the heck, man? And I like so what this, that, that young boy doing in Boston. Uh, the big light-skinned kid, what's his Jason, name? Jason Tatum. Yeah, he's saving 100% of his salary. He doesn't spend a dime. He's living off of endorsements. He's trying to find endorsements to live off of because he's, he's heard the stories. Right. So I, I think, man, what happens with a lot of athletes, you know, in general, I'm not just talking about basketball, but in general, that we trust the agent so much to make everything happen. And the agent sometimes is just focusing on the dollar. <laughs> just, just be real. They focus mm -hmm. in on the dollar, right? But if you're smart enough, you will go hire you a financial advisor who can break it down before you even start throwing money his way. So you can understand how this investment and how your portfolio should be looking, right? And and and, and understand that before you start throwing out dollars and, 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 and without doing your homework and research. So I always said, let's understand the business side of it. You play basketball because you you, you want to make money at it eventually, right? You know, it's, it's, when you were little, it's fun and, and all that. But once you say, my goal is to make it to the NBA, it's not fun anymore. It becomes a business. Right. You become a product. You, you, you're a brand now. You're branding yourself to be someone to make, you know, great moves and, 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 and get some endorsement deals like you were talking about, what you, like you were speaking on, upon, to, to be able to sustain a career or – after basketball, because a lot of times we not we only playing like myself. I only played basketball in the NBA for four years, you know. So what do I do after that, you know? So I have to understand. I have to recreate. I have to rebrand myself. I had to do a lot of thinking. Uh, it took me almost nine years, man, to figure out what was my next move going to be. So talk about uh, that though. You had mentioned that to me after you yeah, finished playing. You sat in the house and was like, "What was the depressed. heck am I going to do?" And I, I was depressed, man. I was, I was lost. Um, I met some great people. You know, I, I met a guy in uh, Houston, Texas, and he actually sat me down and he said, man, you are really good with kids. And I still didn't get it. I was like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to mess with kids as far as training and all that. And then he said, no, you got a gift. So, but sometimes it's, it's other people that see the good in you before you do. And mm -hmm. That person saw the good in me and I took it and ran it and I started doing private lessons, basketball lessons. And I was getting kids and I was getting parents like, man, it's some kind of connection you have with my kid that makes it special. And mm -hmm. it didn't matter what the dollar amount was. They were like, I like what you're doing. Whatever it is, Marcus, just, just tell me. So it took me to start a business, form a business like that. And, to this day, it's a lot of kids that still like cool with me, call call me after I finished training them and all, and all that. So I know this is what I'm supposed to be doing. So, right. but it's a lot of us we don't understand and we 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 get lost. We we go to drugs, you know, because they're so depressed and alcohol, you know, drinking, and not understanding, you know, it's life after basketball. And that's the hardest transition I think for any pro athlete. Make it yeah, a transition. Because, Bob, you got to think, man. And 
it's like a marriage, right? You've been, you have been playing basketball or whatever sport it may be for so long. And then when it's time for that, that last dribble, that last shot, that last pass, and you're not no longer on that spot in that spotlight, it's hard, man. It's hard. It's like a divorce. It's mm. hard. You know, so when you know when you get a divorce, and I don't know, you, you probably don't know about this, because you, but when you get a divorce, because I had a divorce, and, and, and when you get that divorce, it hurts, you know, and, and you don't know what's out there, what's next. You know, you, you tend to say, you know what, I got this. You try to be strong at the moment, but then when they're them papers, you sign those papers and it's it, you lost, you know, because that's the person you were, was with for so long. And basketball is the same way, man. It's a, so you have to know how to reinvent yourself, my brother. You know, I heard that, man. I heard that uh, divorce is, is, is rough. And uh, and I, I definitely understand the level of it. But, you know, I heard Charles Barkley make a comment. Um, one day out of retirement without a job is way too many already because you got all that time on your hands. You know what I'm saying? You feel you understand what I just said? Like he was like, like soon as he retired from the NBA, the next day he was with TNT, because you got so much time on your hands. You still got money, but you need to be able to fill that void of keeping yourself going. But everybody's not like that, though. I mean, Charles Barkley made a whole lot of money. You know what? What about the guys like me who was, you know, average? You know, making money. The salary wasn't like huge like those those guys. And I'm not playing anymore, so. I had to figure it out, you know, that I wanted to be active for one, because if you're making a whole lot of money, yes, you can get lazy, you can get fat, you know, out of shape, uh, then the diabetes and all that stuff comes along, you know, because, you know, our history, you know, most African American develop uh, diabetes and high blood pressure. Uh, so if you're not active, man, you can, it can also hurt you, you know, so I, I, I guess I was fortunate enough to understand, you know, what my calling was and what I wanted to do. And the rest is history pretty much, man. But there's a lot of people that don't know. Now, Charles Barkley, he, yes, he made a whole lot of money and he jumped right into TNT, TNT and he was, do, he's doing his thing. But what happened to that, that other percent, you know, of, of, of athletes that didn't make all that money who love the game, but they lost, you know, they did. And some of them probably didn't have an education. I'm just saying, you know, just speaking from the heart, speaking the truth. A lot of guys who, who who made it probably dropped out, you know, didn't finish, you know, the education, and now they're lost. You know, so I think some of those colleges that these guys went to um, who said they loved them and, and wanted to see them be successful basketball players, I mean, should, should reach back out to those guys if you didn't get your education and, and, and see if they want to come back to school to get the education because without your degrees and now, man, in this world, it's hard, you know, without your master's. I mean, it's, it's crazy. So I was just, I was just finna dig into that with you. I was going to ask you about that. Uh, as far as somebody told me, and this is where the confusion comes in at. Now, if your scholarship is a year to year thing with the school where they can just pull it at any time. And then somebody tell me that the school is obligated. If you go pro, to be able to, you can come back and get your degree. How does that work? Um, I think some universities, I don't know if all universities are like this, but some of the universities, because they want their, uh, their ratings, they call them ratings, graduating, athletes graduating from the school because they get a higher rating, uh, gradu graduation rating. So you want the student athlete to come and get their degree, you know? So if that means two or three years, if you come, you leave and, and you're a freshman and you want to come back, then some universities welcome you back. I mean, Jawan Howard did it at Michigan. Um, I know Jabari Parker is going back. He's going to do his thing for Duke, get his finish up and get his degree from Duke. So it's, 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 it's programs, I guess, out there for some of these athletes. You just got to know and you got to ask. Sometimes you leave and just say, forget it. I'm done. <laughs> I'm going right. to play in the NBA forever, man. So I'm good. But then, but you, but you went back and did it, though. You know? Yeah, but I didn't go back to the University of Illinois. You right, know, right. And, and, but I did go back to get my degree and it's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of things that change too. You know, it's not strictly, you know, you sitting in a classroom. Now you can do a lot of things online and, 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 and take your time with it. I took my time with it and I finally, you know, did it. But it's a lot of times, man, we get so confused 
and we think it's hard. We think, oh, man, we're not going to do it, man, because I've been gone for 10, 12 years from, the, from college, and I don't want to go back. So some, of, some, some people get afraid and scared and not wanting to do it because of, you know, the circumstances of, man, I got to sit in the classroom. I got to do this. I got to do that. And, and uh, it's, it's totally different now. Yeah, I think um, I think I think uh, when guys like you go back, it sets the tone for the next generation. You know, I think that they need to know that that it's okay. You know, you hear so many people talking about, oh, you don't need no college degree, you don't need one. Well, it don't hurt. You know what I'm saying? It can't hurt to have one, man. And the further you go in education, it's a proven fact that you can set yourself up to live a pretty decent lifestyle. So well, it it helps. You know. I tell people this, Bob, when I, when you go back to school or whatever you may do, right. Like I can learn something from you just by hanging out with you. I can learn some from you. Right. Yeah. I do that with all the people I come in contact with. They thinking I'm just their buddies, but I'm actually picking their brain on things and, and learning things. I'm actually going to school every day. I step out the house because I want to learn something. So I always tell my kids, you know, when you go, or you meet someone, talk to them and pick their brain, you know, just like me. If I been there, done that before you, you should be asking questions of what it takes for me to be not you, Marcus, but to kind of follow in some of your footsteps and then some of the things you did well and some of the things you didn't do well. And so you just have to know who, who, who you can pick and pick their brain, you know, try to understand what they, they walk, how they walk was, you know, to making it. Yeah, man, that's that's something else, man. And uh, I just think that uh, something has to change with with these young guys, man, because too many of them are just leaving the game and leaving the game empty-handed. And we what we will do is uh, we'll, we'll just continue to try to spread the word, man, and, and continue to educate them, man. How much time we got left, big dog? Where we at? Where we at with time? We got some time, man. We got we got plenty of time. We got at least eight minutes left. Okay. And um, I think I think. Uh, when you talk about guys that made it, like you was talking about the Antoine Walkers of the world who, who made a whole lot of money and, and then became uh, broke pretty much and not trusting people or trusting people too much. I think that has a big part of, of, of guys that has the money, you know, people, you know, search, you know, it could be your, it could be someone in your clique that you thought was my man and he's, he's got my best interest. So I trust him. He's going to do right. And then you write a check and then you give him the check and then you go back to playing basketball. You never, ever ask any questions. What's up this month? Show me what's going on now, you know, sitting down and having conversations each week of what your money is doing. And a lot of times these guys who, who has a lot of money, you know, they just like, well, I wrote him a check for $2 million, so he good. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be good, you know, down the road. And that's what he's telling you, too. Man, we good. Mm-hmm. Knowing he could be investing that money in something else that he's only involved in and in getting the percentages and getting, in, 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 you know, getting refunds and money back. And you're not understanding what the heck is going on because he's not telling you that. Yeah, that's, so that's, that's, pretty, be- that's pretty criminal, man. And I noticed that a lot of them dudes that do that, they end up getting locked up behind that, messing with these people's money. Like, uh, you know, like, like the attorney that was trying to, uh, trying to lock R. Kelly up. The white guy that's uh, going after R. Kelly. He ended up stealing money from an NBA player, the big fella that was at Miami, but he, in, uh, he was in Miami with the Miami Heat, and now he's playing with, who was, you know, the big, tall, seven-footer that was in Miami ended up leaving Miami. Oh, uh, yeah, I know you're talking about. I can't think of his name, though. Uh, Who are you playing with? Is he playing with? I don't with? know. Is it Whiteside? Whiteside. 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 Yeah. Yeah, that Whiteside. dude stole, like, $5 million from Whiteside, man. Wow. You know? And Whiteside didn't know till he started digging into his finances and looking it up. Like, dang. They be thinking them dudes ain't going to pay attention. Wow. You know, like, so yeah, big fella. I remember him now. Yeah, wow. I didn't know. I didn't know that, man. I never. I, I never. It's the first time me hearing that he had gotten taken. But I'm pretty sure it's a lot of guys. And five million dollars is a whole lot of money. I don't care how much money you made. Five million dollars is a whole lot of money to be loose. You're gonna feel it eventually, you know, unless so you're I getting think- that Steph Curry bread. <laughs> but still, man, if you even if even if you getting that type of money, that guess what? That five million could have been a, 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 
you could have put that in the bank for your kids. You know, you could have you put that to the side and wrote them something and said, you can't touch this. This could be your college fund or whatever it may be. Uh, at least, you know, it's doing right. You know, when you just lose it and nothing is coming back into you, <laughs> bank account, and just five minutes, five million just gone. It just okay, evaporated. Yeah, I, don't <laughs> how, I don't care how much money you make, Bob. That's that man. That's five mil. Come on, dude. <laughs> but but it's a lot of uh, things that I think athletes, you know, us athletes need to learn. Um, and that's you know who who's in your circle, uh, and they need to learn early. Don't have a big entourage. Ask questions early, man. Are you are you down with me because you think you see potential in me? <laughs> you know, and, and and I mean, not joking. Sometimes you might have to draw up contracts. <laughs> like, man, do you really have my best interest? Because I want you to sign this because I don't want you to come back to me and talk about I owe you some money or you I told you I got you or, or when I make it. Because people use that against you too, man. You told me, man, when you was hooping in high school or grade school that you got me. <laughs> <laughs> hooping in grade school? <laughs> man, come on, man. They, you hooping in grade school and you dominating, right? And they talking pros already, man. You gonna make it in the pros, man. You my man. You gonna be you gonna you gonna you gonna take care of me? And then you all you just joking around. You might be saying, Yeah, yeah, I got you, but he taking it serious. Well, you know what? Talk about this live real quick. And I, I you know, I know we probably have to go. People think when you sign say, let's say a $5 million contract over three years, they think you get that money all up front. Wow. You know, people seem to think that you're walking around with that whole $5 million. They don't realize that they get paid the weekly or, or the IRS going to take a $5 million of that, what they going to take? 40, 40%. 40%. IRS going to get 40% of that, man. So 40% of $5 million, of five million that's $2 million. Come on, man. So people look at the big picture, not knowing that, and Uncle Sam has to get his. And then you go play at different states, you got entertainment taxes on top of that. So mm. a lot of times people just don't understand. Like kid, like I didn't understand. Every time I went to LA, I was like, my my accountant was saying, you know, you gotta play, pay entertainment taxes. I'm like, what the heck is entertainment taxes? You know, it's like LA has an entertainment taxes along with a state and federal tax. I'm like, wow. Wow. So you get hard. And just imagine there's two teams in LA. So you right. there a lot. Right. Crazy, man. So you got it. You got, we got to educate our kids, man. And also we got to uh, educate people, man. When you see dollar amounts, don't think that's the big, <laughs> the big. So when you see a hundred million dollars, really that's only 60 million. That's only 60 million. Still a whole lot of money. <laughs> yeah. That's still, still a whole, a whole lot. So that's 40 million to the IRS and then 60 million. You got to pay your agent. Yep. And then, then you got your cars, then you got your house. Right. And, so it's, it's hard, man, for guys to understand that. But, you know, if you see somebody that made $5 million for three years, yeah, they divide that up. They divide it up just like a regular job. Like every two weeks you can get paid or once a month you can get paid, you know. Okay. And, and sometimes people think that, oh, he got $5 million, so he does, he got that $5 million sitting in his bank. Yeah, they think that, man. They, they really People really think that. And I saw yeah. Sebastian Telfair say that. You know, because I think he was fighting a case recently because he got caught with some guns, you know. And uh, he was saying how they think the NBA should, he should, the NBA should give, give y'all that money up front. And I'm like, no job, do that. No. Working a real job. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, we paid you 40 grand a year. We're going to give you the whole 40 right now. Man, people would be walking off them jobs. They got payrolls, man. It's just the same right. as like any other company. <laughs> the NBA is a company. <laughs> right. And they write checks just like, you know, in the payroll, man. Like, you're in the payroll, so you're going to get a check every two weeks, you know, yeah. once, once a month. But, man, it's hard, Bob, man, for, for youngsters, man, now in this era, man. I feel I feel for a lot of them, man. But I also know that some of them are educated enough to make the right, the right decision, like your boy LeBron James. LeBron James has made a lot of money, but he also helped his friends make a whole lot of money. His friends are, most of his friends are actually his business partners, but he made them, or he asked them to go back to school and learn the game. Uh, his agent, I think he started off selling him uh, throwback jerseys. Mm -hmm. right? I heard he met him at the airport or something. Met him at the airport, man. Rich became, Paul, right? Yeah, they became friends, man. And, and 
I think I don't know if this really happened, but I'm assuming LeBron James asked him to be, you know, his agent one day. So he learned the business from another agent, right? right. That he was, you know, trying to learn a game and he learned the game and he branched off and did his own thing, man. So yeah. it's things like that, man. And I they, think and, that and they ain't that big deal, man, with um uh, that that uh that, that company in California. He found signed that with that five hundred million dollar deal. Yeah, they they yeah. teamed up with this company. I can't remember the name of it. I knew all I know what you're talking about, though. I know what you're talking about. And then they wanted, <laughs> and then they tried to make it where agents had to go to college to deal with professional athletes. Remember, all that whole yeah. thing came unraveled, and then yeah. they were like, "Y'all yeah. just trying to keep the brothers out of it." And then they ruled it unconstitutional for the NCAA to do that. Yeah, so that's crazy, man. It's, I mean, it's. Everything is all about money, man. Think about this, man. It's like I watched uh, – I don't know if you watched this. I know we jumping off the subject, but it was called The Godfather. I think of – it was a, a musician or a guy who was in the music industry. I watched it, the documentary the other day. I can't think of his name, but, man, it was so crazy. This guy, he said he never he, – he didn't get his education. He didn't get his degrees or anything, but he knew the business mm -hmm. of music. You got to see it, man. Check it out. It's on. I think it's on Netflix or something like that, but – he was telling me, it was, he was saying so many things, like he can go into, you know, meetings and make things happen, you know. Puffy right. was on there, Jay-Z, all those guys were, you know, talking about how he's the guru, the guru of entertainment. Like, he used to get things done. Wow. So Without, a, so without all that educational stuff. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times people learn differently too, man. Like, people think that you have to go to school and, and be this, you know, big person. Old scholar. Yeah, that I that I got all I got straight A's. I know a lot of people that got straight A's and not making no money. You know, right. so so we I think you learn a lot in life, you know, your experiences and things like that. And I've did it, you know, I've learned so much and just in life in general. I learned something from other people. So you can do that, man. You can be successful that way too. And to all my people in Chicago, uh, I'm talking about the gangs and all this, man, and I'm, and I'm gonna, we're gonna end with this, Bob, that Quit, you know, selling this stuff, selling drugs, man, and, and thinking that's the way you're going to make, you know, your money. I, I always tell kids, especially kids that's involved in doing things that they shouldn't be doing. I sit down and talk to a group of 10 and I say, why don't you make this your business model? You two, you 10 guys get together, right? And, and format each neighborhood that you're going to be working in. And y'all say you cut grass, you know, you're cutting grass, you know, lawnmower services, right? You get mm -hmm. 10 lawnmowers or whatever because you're selling drugs. So if you're selling drugs, won't you just say, I'm going to stop and I'm going to buy these lawnmowers because I don't want to do drugs no more. I'm tired of looking over my shoulders. And y'all cut 10, 20 houses a day, but each one of y'all in different areas. Man, you Killers. add that up. Woo. You'll make a killing. You'll make a yeah. killing. So, so to my young ones, man, it's another hustle that you can do, man. And just, just go out and do it, man, and not hurt anybody with the stuff that you guys are doing, selling and, 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 and smoking and doing all this crazy stuff, man. This goes out to my Chicago peeps, man. All ball Chicago. That's what's up, man. Well, I ain't no more for me to add to that, man. Thank y'all for tuning in to All Ball Chicago. If you're interested in advertising on the show, hit up the Believe Podcast Network. Um, I guess that's it, big fella. What you got for him? Man, rest in peace to my boy, Steve Hutchin, man. It's time for me to unlace the shoes. We up out of here, man. Thank y'all for tuning in. Peace. Peace.